My name's Nev. I've been surfing for 53 years and um, spent most of my life around the ocean, obviously, because I surf. In 1992, I was in New Caledonia on a little atoll surfing. And I was walking along the beach and I saw all this plastic. Like, I was going, well, what, what, what's going on with this? What's this? Has a, has a boat gone down? I saw buckets and thongs and things, and I, I honestly thought that this was wreckage of some sort. But actually, in hindsight, it was the first evidence of the Pacific gyres that we all know about now, the, the plastic in the oceans. And that was a long time ago. And now we are really suffering. The, 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 our oceans are suffering, and there's no doubt about it. And we have to find the solution. So that's why I'm saying passionately that we need to engage. I've spent the last 10 years traveling the world, talking with people around the world that don't even really know what surfing is. But they're certainly aware of the problem of waste in our environment, plastic in the oceans. And everyone has solutions to a point. But most of these solutions are boutique solutions, like Band-Aids. This is not to say that there are countless well-intentioned people around the world trying their best to resolve this issue. From cleaning beaches through to reducing the use of single-use plastics, all absolutely relevant to consume less. But all of these things are not going to make the difference that's required. Plastic is not going anywhere, and nor is garbage or waste. It's going into our environment every single damn day. And tidying up after is not going to solve the problem. If we can give that waste value and process it before it enters the environment, no more plastic going into the oceans. None. That simple. So MBL technology, based in the US, using the technology that I've helped to develop for the use of low-grade plastic, an awesome company in Argentina called Z1, who takes garbage and makes an inert, safe material from that. US MBL technologies that take the greatest proportion of everyday garbage and turn it into fuel cell pellets that can be used to fire concrete kilns and other uses. Those three combinations leave a clean floor of a MRF, a materials recovery facility, every day. 400, 1,000, 2,000 ton a day of everyday garbage that does not go to landfill. We can deliver that. The solution is here, and it's not hundreds of millions of dollars like some of the incineration solutions. Incineration is a waste of awesome resources. Garbage is a resource. I know the technologies that we have under one roof are all ready to go. No R&D required. 12 months turnkey, and we can have a facility operating in Tennessee, in New York, Sydney, Denpasar, somewhere in Mongolia. Yeah. We can have them operating in a small town and a large city. It's decentralised. It's right where the garbage is. It doesn't need to be trucked for 100 miles to go to a giant incinerator. Most of the waste that gets washed down rivers is what we call MSW waste or everyday family crap. And what we do is we turn that crap into composite recycled plastic panels. The solution is now, it's ready. There's so many surfing based uh, operations around the world that are actually making a difference for our grandkids, for my grandkids, you know, I've got another 30 years of surfing, trust me. But my kids 
I've got a hundred years of surfing ahead of them, right? I want them to have the life that I've had. I want them to be to have a planet that is not going to crumble because of climate change. And every one of us has to do something, is we have to stop it at its source. We have to get it away from landfill and we have to get it away from being dumped in the environment because there's nowhere else for it to go. And we have to turn it into product that there is a demand for. And guess what that is? The building industry. The offtake of our facility that has these multiple technologies provides energy, provides building materials, inert ground cover, uh, additives to road base. Everything that comes out of that factory, leaving a clean floor at the end of the day, is a profitable item that helps the environment. And guess what? It sequesters carbon. Instead of that rubbish, that garbage going into a landfill or blowing around in the environment, damaging our oceans and our food chain, instead of that, that carbon is put within a product which can then be recycled or it is built within and is there forever. The carbon credits on this alone are amazing. But how can you actually give value to low-grade plastic waste that nobody wants? That's probably a question you're thinking right now. Well, imagine this. Every afternoon in Bali, for example, because everyone focuses on Bali. We're surfers. We love Bali. I've been going to Bali since the 70s. <laughs> but it's the place where everybody sees all the plastic washing up on the beaches. And therefore, the, fo the global focus is on that poor little nation saying, oh, look, what's going on there? Every afternoon and every morning with the tide, plastic washes up on the beaches. Every day, villagers who really know no better throw their, their plastic waste into the environment because it has no value to them. But guess what? A picker who works on a landfill in Ubud earns two to three thousand rupiah a kilo for good recyclable plastic like bottles, milk bottles, yogurt containers, things like that. Single polymers that can be recycled, but they leave everything else behind. And then they take it and they get paid 4,000 rupiah if they've sorted it into the individual polymers. What about if my company paid 5,000 rupiah a kilo or even the same price so we didn't upset the landfill operator? <laughs> Whatever. That would equate to about $3 US for a 10 kilo bag of plastic waste that my company would pay them for. And we can use that in our products. We implement that and there is no more waste in the environment anywhere. I've had this conversation with the government of Indonesia, Honduras, in Peru, in Mozambique. I've been on more landfills than you could poke a stick at. And they're not a fun place to be. In fact, they're unbelievable. The one in Jakarta is beyond description. And so many people live on that landfill, eking out an existence, as you've probably seen, getting the quality plastics. So, We've got to stop it from going in the environment. It, we can give it value. And in a developed nation, people or governments pay money to deliver that waste to a landfill. $50 a tonne. $150 a tonne, $300 a tonne. So guess what? They don't take it to the landfill. They take it to our facility. So our company gets paid to take that waste that was going to go to landfill. This is a solution that's viable and it will have a positive impact on our environment in time. It's a highly scalable opportunity. It can be put into small communities and small villages, or it can be put into big cities. We can do this and work out how we can be the beacon of resolving this issue once and for all over time, but resolving it starting now by stopping waste going into the environment in the first place. Plastic's not evil. The improper disposal of plastic is. I'd like to give you an example also, because some of you may be thinking, well, what are you going to do with all that plastic that you pull out? And what are you going to do with all that 
garbage that you have to turn into something. Well, let's just stay on the plastic issue because that's the one that's the most emotive. About 4,000 tonne a day of garbage is generated in the city of Nashville of a population of about 1.3 million people. That 4,000 tonne a day, 12.2% of that garbage is plastic. Only 5% of that 12% of plastic gets recycled. So what happens to the rest? <laughs> Sorry, it goes to landfill. There's a company in the US that needs 4 million 8x4 sheets. That equates to uh, a lot of plastic. In fact, it equates to 100,000 tonne of plastic that needs to be taken out of the environment to make those 4 million sheets. It's all doable, totally doable. It's not rocket science. And think about how many communities around the US would all need a facility like this to process all that waste and what could be done with the product. Anything that can be molded in a clamshell process can use this system. It can be you know, flood mitigation, formwork board for the concrete construction industry, for hoarding boards around um, new developments, almost anything you could think of. That's where plastic can go. That's where plastic will be sequestered. That will help our environment. That will reduce climate change. I was invited by the president of Mozambique, can you believe it, to go to a landfill that only a matter of months beforehand actually collapsed and buried 30 people alive in garbage because those people were living on the landfill to actually collect garbage, to collect plastics and things like that, scavengers. So tragic, so unbelievable. And the landfill in Bali, the Surawong landfill, it's, it's a nightmare. It's built over a mangrove on Banoa Harbour. And every time we surfers fly in there, we can see it out the window of the plane. When you're partying in Kuta and the wind's coming from the east, you can smell it. The citizens of Nashville or Rutherford County can smell their landfill. We've got to stop this. And I know it's not easy. And incineration is not the answer. The answer is diverting that waste away from the landfill to a facility that processes it all 100%. No more waste going to landfill. No more plastic washing down rivers into the oceans. We owe it to ourselves and we owe it to the world to show that we, the blessed ones, the surfers who bathe in the ocean every day in pristine environments while the rest of the world, you know, suffers. We've got a responsibility. We collectively could make a difference. Let's do it.